So leave your Bibles open there in 1 Timothy chapter 4. And um, I'm preaching a sermon that I didn't really plan to preach today. I had planned to continue going through the, uh, uh, the Rightly Dividing series that we've been going through. And uh, it's a sermon that I thought I'd never have to preach here in Australia. And unfortunately, our nation's becoming more wicked. Unfortunately, our, our nation's becoming more wicked. And tomorrow, many, many Australians will be celebrating Halloween. If you look at 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. The title for the sermon tonight is The Seducing Spirit of Halloween. The Seducing Spirit of Halloween. Just turn off that fan. Seducing Spirit of Halloween. Now, as I, as I grew up as a child in, in school, and, you know, obviously familiar with Halloween, it's familiar with, with, with you know, the, the Hollywood films, the Hollywood TV, understanding American culture and how Halloween has been embraced by Americans. But, you know, when I was a child, it was never celebrated. When I was a child, my friends, we never went door to door, you know, asking for lollies, asking for sweets. We never went dressing up as, as witches and ghosts and, and, and devils and things like that. I thought, you know, thank God for Australia. I thought, thank God that, you know, we've got one up against the Americans. All right? The, the, the wickedness that's coming out of that nation of America. And there is, you know, the, the, the wickedness of the, of, the, of the celebrities, the celebrity, you know, uh, icons, you know, the, the music, the, the Hollywood films, the filth, the pornography that's coming out of America. And a lot of that has influenced our nation. And I thought, thank God for Australia. You know, that, that as Australians, we're not buying into this pagan witchcraft junk of Halloween. Thank God that I don't have to see this in Australia. So I thought. So I thought. You know, when I came up here to the Sunshine Coast, I was shocked. We started the church here on the 1st of October, didn't we? And then October the 31st, the same month, the end of the month, I saw the children dressed up here. You know, more, more than us are in Sydney, dressed up in, in, their, in, their, in their devil outfits, in their ghosts, and going around house to house. And at last year, I saw an increase. I saw more kids out there doing it. And, you know, I live in, in, in this area called Aura with its all new developments. And the area that I live in, tomorrow, the, the community is going to do a Halloween party. You know, some streets are going to be sele- have been selected where the kids can go and, and trick and treat. And the, the residents of the street have been provided sweets, have been provided sweets by the community or by the local government. And say, hey, help the kids here. You know, teach the kids Halloween. You know, but, you, know, you know, teach them this doctrine of devils. And the Bible's warned us here, in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits. You see, Halloween is a seducing spirit. It's a seducing holiday for children, specifically for children. How do they seduce children? Well, children love sweets, don't they? They love their lollies. They lo- love that, you know, that flavor in the mouth. Hey, go and celebrate this devilish holiday and you'll get some sweets out of it. You'll get some lollies. That's seduction. That's a seducing spirit. They'll also tell them, hey, you know, go and, and dress up. Kids love to dress up, right? Kids love to play games where they pretend to be, you know, somebody, uh, you know, instead of being something like a firefighter, instead of, you know, being someone, you know, dressing up as something, you know, that's productive. No, they're being taught to dress up like devils dress up like these evil spirits. And the Bible tells us, another thing they say is, man, Halloween's so good, you get to meet the neighbors, knock on their doors, you know, meet the neighbors. Listen, if you want your kids to meet the neighbors, every week we've got door to door soul in here in Australia, right here on the Sunshine Coast, right here in Caloundra, take your kids to meet the neighbors so they can see how much they hate God, so they can see how much they think they're good, you know, they're good enough to go to heaven, so they can see the alcohol, the drugs, they can see you know, the wickedness of man. Hey, let them meet the neighbors in the true sense rather than by celebrating this wicked holiday. Okay? The Bible tells us in Isaiah 5.20, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness. Look at this. And put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Halloween is a bitter, wicked, dark holiday. But they make it sweet. right? They make it sweet. Go get your little lolly bag there. Go knock on the neighbor's door. Meet the neighbors, dress up, and get your lollies. I can see why my children might be tempted to participate in that. Sounds good. 
dress up, get out of the house and get some free lollies. You know, I read, I don't know if this is accurate, but I read that uh, a quarter of um, the, the um, uh, sales of lollies and, you know, they call it candy in America. You know, a, a quarter of the year's sales of candy all take place around Halloween. Think about that. A quarter of the year's sales on one day of Halloween. So obviously, you know, this has been promoted by the businesses. And w- w- what upsets me the most is, you know, I need to go and we need to go get groceries for the family. And now Woolworths, Coles, you go to these shopping centers, they're all decorated now with Halloween decorations. They're ashamed to decorate, you know, the nativity scene in Christmas. They're ashamed to, to decorate things that depict Christ or his crucifixion. They're ashamed to do that, but they're not ashamed to decorate with Halloween decorations, ghosts and demons and all this. Why? Because they want to sell lollies, you know? And I, I went to the, to the local um, IGA, you know, not on purpose, but some of the dark chocolate that I saw there that I love, I saw half price, wow, awesome. No, it's half price chocolate, they don't realize, hold on, it's half price because they're trying to sell as much lollies as they can during this season. All right, so I mean, I'm going to take advantage of the sales, but you know, at the end of the day, they're doing it for business. All right, they're doing it for business, and it's unfortunate that they're selling the wickedness of the devil. You know, why should we not involve our kids into this celebration tomorrow? The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Think about those words. We often associate that with teaching our kids about Jesus Christ teaching our kids to fear God, teaching our kids to walk in the ways of the Lord so they would not depart from it in the future. But you know the reverse is true. If we teach our kids the the works of darkness, we teach our kids these pagan holidays, when they grow up, they're not going to depart from it. So you've got to be careful with what you allow your kids to be influenced by. You know, so, uh, you know, it's just getting worse. Uh, You know, this is a, a, for Australians, this is a holiday for millennials. You know, if the, the children that have grown up, you know, from the year, have been born from the year 2000, they're known as the millennials. You know, they're growing up now, and they think Halloween is an Australian holiday. They think this is just part of our culture. You know, when, what happens when they become adults? They're going to teach their kids to celebrate Halloween. Guys, generation after generation, this is going to get worse. This is going to be worse. They're going to be more ashamed to celebrate the things that depict Christ, and, and they're going to be more proud. They're going to be more boastful of the things of wickedness. It's coming, it's, we've been affected now. It's a disease. It's a virus that Australia has gotten from watching American programs and they've brought it here into our nation. What a shame for our nation. Let's learn a little bit about Halloween. Maybe you guys don't know much about it. I didn't really know much about it except, you know, dressing up, trick and treating. Let me tell you a little bit about this, but please first go to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8. Before we get into the history, before I tell you much about it, I do want to have a warning before we look at this, okay? Ephesians 5, 8, please. Ephesians 5, 8, the Bible reads, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Listen, the kids going out there walking, knocking on neighbors, are they walking as children of light? No, they're going walking as children of darkness. Parents, please don't allow your kids to participate in Halloween. Please don't let them participate going walking in darkness. Verse number nine, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. You think Halloween is acceptable to the Lord? Of course not. He hates that celebration. He hates those that participate in that mess. Look at verse number 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Now, this is where the warning is. Of course, you know, I have to speak about this. The Bible told us there to reprove them. I never thought that I would have to reprove Halloween. I didn't think I'd become a pastor and never preach about Halloween here in Australia. But the Bible's told us here, when we see the unfruitful works of darkness, we have to reprove it. We have to call it out. We have to say this is a wicked holiday. And not allow our families and our children to be affected by this. Verse 13. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So how do we reprove the darkness? How do we correct it? How do we judge it? By the light of God's word. By the light of God's word. 
And so as we go and look at the history of Halloween, I'm just going to touch a point, a point, upon some points here. I'm not seeking for you to get interested and go, man, I'm going to really study out Halloween. What for? What for? It's a study of darkness. But we need to understand it to some extent, understand it from a surface level so we can reprove it accurately with the light of God's Word. Okay? So what is Halloween? Well, this began about 2,000 years ago. Uh, and it, uh, it, it starts from Celtic Ireland. Um, and they celebrated a festival called Sowin. Okay, Sowin. And it's kind of like a New Year's, you know, it's kind of like the New Year's Day. It's celebrating uh, the change from, from summer to winter, you know, for, uh, the, the changes of the season. And they believe that at this point in time, um, that uh, the, the, the separation between what was physical and, and spiritual uh, you know, w w was not very, uh, there wasn't, like the separation wasn't that clear. And it would allow evil spirits, it would allow ghosts and, and spirits from the spiritual realm to come into the physical realm. That's the thoughts that they would have. Now, as I tell you this, this isn't true, obviously. It's not true, okay? It's fables, okay? But this is what they believed. And um, so they believed that this is a time that spirits would enter into our world and then they would dress up into costumes. They'd put on masks, to hide themselves from those spirits, okay? And they would dress up like spirits, so the spirits would think that, oh, you're just another spirit. Instead of tormenting them, they would go and torment people. And so that was the reason why they would dress up and do this. Not only would they do this, but the droids, have you ever heard of the droids in, in Europe? These are kind of like uh, wizards or witches, you know, male, male droids. They would, they would put, now make these large bonfires, you know, to scare away the devils, as it were. They would even sacrifice animals, you know, and the, the purpose behind it was to protect the people from these evil spirits. And uh, the Bible tells us, look, these, these druids, I mean, it sounds like, oh, they're protecting the people. Look, these are wizards. You know, this is witchcraft. What does the Bible have to say about that? In Leviticus 19.31, it says, Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Listen, if this holiday has this influence of these wizards, these wicked people, God says, don't regard them. But we've regarded it. We've brought it into our nation. And when I say we, I'm not talking about me and you. I'm talking about our, our society, our people, our fellow Australians are bringing in this wicked uh, holiday uh, into our nation. It saddens me. Please go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, God had very clear instructions for Old Testament Israel how to deal with these people. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9, the Bible reads, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. God wants us to keep free from abominations. Hey, what abominations? Let's keep reading verse number 10. And there shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a wizard, or a charmer, or a consultant with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord, and because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Man, I, you know, the Lord has no reason to not judge Australia today. We've gone after these, this divination. We've gone after the way of these wizards. We've sought after these pagan things, and now we're bringing it. We're celebrating it in our nation here, and we're getting our kids involved in this. And I'll say again, we, our society, Australians. Let's look at verse number 13. It says here, uh, sorry, yeah, f uh, f uh, 12, 12, uh, no, 13. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times, unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. The word suffer there means he's not allowed us to do these things. The Old Testament nation of Israel were the people of God. And when it comes to this New Testament times, you are the people of God. If you're saved today, you're part of New Life Baptist Church, we are the people of God. And God says, I don't allow you to be part of this. 
You say, oh, come on. You know, the neighborhood's having a celebration. They're having a barbecue. At least, surely the barbecue, right? No, he does not allow us to be part of it. You don't celebrate it. You don't get ready with lollies just in case your neighborhood kids come to your house. You get neighborhood kids come to your house asking for lollies. You tell those kids, in this house, we don't celebrate Halloween. That's what you tell them. In this house, we serve the Lord God. That's what they need to hear. Don't you think that's going to wake them up a little bit? They go house to house. Everyone's saying, oh, hey, come in. Give me, like, give me some lollies. They knock on your house. Hey, we don't celebrate Halloween. Here's a, here's a tract. Hey, come to church. Wouldn't that wake them up and go, hold on, why don't people celebrate Halloween? Maybe they'll start investigating. Maybe they'll start looking at this, start researching, start seeking the Lord God. Hey, I'm not allowed. God does not allow me to celebrate Halloween. How about that to the kids? All right. Hey, do you love God? Do you love Jesus? Well, God says, hey, we shouldn't do this. Here's a Bible tract. Just take that. <laughs> All right. Let's do that. Okay. Now, let, let's keep going through the history here. So they would celebrate this day of, of so win. And, uh, and then the Roman Catholics. The Roman Catholics, obviously, they didn't like this, these, these pagan teachings. And so like the Roman Catholics love to do, they Christianized the celebration. Right? They Christianized the celebration. And instead of, instead of it being a, a you know, celebration of, of death, it was still kind of was a celebration of death, they called it the All Saints Day. The All Saints Day. Now, of course, we think of saints, we're all saints here if you're saved. Okay? But for the Roman Catholics, what are the saints? The dead. The dead believers that have done miracles after their death, and then they call them saints, and they pray to the saints. So they pray to dead people, the Roman Catholics do. Okay? And so they took a celebration of death, and they just tried to Christianize it, right? Uh, Try to make it a, a religious holiday. And uh, All Saints Day is, was also known as, um, uh, so All Saints Day is, um, you know, when we look at the word saint, that, that comes from the word sanctified, right? Sanctified. And this became known as All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve. When you think of the Lord's Prayer, you know, it says, you know, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's where the word Halloween comes from. Hallowed be thy name. The word hallowed comes from holy, something that is holy. Something that is holy is set apart. It's sanctified. You know, the words holy and sanctified are are interchangeable words. They mean the same thing. They've been set apart for a purpose. Hallowed be thy name. And so when you look at the word All Saints Day, they think of saints as sanctified, as hallowed people. Okay? So that's where we get the idea of... uh, uh, um, it was All Hallows Day, All Hallows Eve. So the 1st of, of November, till this day by the Roman Catholic Church, is All Saints Day, okay, All Saints Day. But just like before the day of some celebration, think of Christmas. We have Christmas Day on December 25th, don't we? But what do we call December 24th? What do we call it, anyone? Christmas Eve. Why is it Eve? Because it represents the evening before Christmas Day. And so All, uh, all Saints Day, or all, all, uh, um, Hallowed, all Hallows Day, on the 1st of November, the eve prior to that, being October 31st, became known as All Hallows Eve. All Hallows Eve, and that's where we get the term Halloween from today. Okay, so that kind of gives you the idea, why do we call it Halloween? It's, it's an interesting thing, because they're basically saying it's a holy day. You know, it's something that is sanctified, something to do with saints. But for the Roman Catholics, dead saints. And for the pagans, you know, the spirits, the ghosts, the devils, all those kinds of things. So it's very ironic that it uses this term when the Bible teaches us not to celebrate this nonsense, not to celebrate this wicked religion or this wicked uh, holiday. All right. So that gives you a bit of the history there. And then when it comes to trick or treating, this is probably what we know Halloween most for, the trick and treating. Okay, so what would happen in, in medieval Britain is that the poor would go to homes begging for food, begging for bread, in exchange for praying for dead relatives. Because if you know the Roman Catholic religion, they believe in, in uh, purgatory, and they believe that you can get your um, relatives that are in purgatory, um, out of purgatory and into heaven earlier if you pray for them. So the poor would come, beg for food, and say, if you give me food, I'll pray for your dead relatives. Again, it's a celebration of the dead. And this is where it begins, this idea of, of trick and treat and going to people's houses and getting something to eat. You know, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 9.27, As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, 
the judgment. There's no point of you praying for the dead. We're never instructed to do this in the Bible. This is a pagan practice. This is a practice of false religions to pray for the dead. Once you're dead, guess what? You've been judged. The dead is already either in heaven, if they're saved, or burning in hellfire. There is no purgatory. There is no halfway house. Okay? Praying for the dead is a pagan practice. Luke 16, 26, Jesus Christ speaking of the rich man in hell and Lazarus in heaven. He says, and beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Listen, once a, the dead person is in hell, they can never go to heaven. And once that dead person goes to heaven, praise God, they can never go to hell. Wasting your time praying for the dead? No. Okay? But this is where the trick and treating comes from, contrary to what the Bible teaches. Then Halloween kind of started to, you know, not be, not, not be celebrated all that much of the years. And then in the United States, there was a revival of Halloween. Because in the 19th century, there was a large immigration of Scottish and Irish immigrants that came from, from those lands. They migrated into the United States, okay, and into Canada. And as often many migrants do, they want to bring something of their past nation, something of their past, something of their culture, and they brought Halloween. So it's, it's actually, uh, in our modern day, in our Western society, it's quite a newer celebration, even though it goes back 2,000 years. But in, again, in our Western culture, it's a newer thing. Again, in Australia, it's a brand new thing, really, that's coming into play uh, as, as we live. And uh, they repackaged it, and, and they called this celebration trick or treating. But during that time, it wasn't so much about the treats. It wasn't about the sweets. It was more about the trick. You know, it was, it was about doing pranks on one another. It was more about uh, committing, like doing vandalism, destroying things. That's what the celebration was about, destroying, destruction, you know, doing pranks, things like that. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 4, actually, please go there. Go to Proverbs 4, 14, please. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 13. So today it's more about the treats. Today it's more about the lollies, okay? But when it started in, the, in our Western countries, it was more about the treats, the, the, sorry, the tricks, the vandalism, the, the, the pranks. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. And uh, a couple of nights ago, we had somebody, uh, I'm not sure what time it was, I think it was 4 in the morning, come and, and bang, bang our, 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 our sliding door. Just come and bang, bang, bang. You know, and I'm just thinking, it's probably the Halloween season. It's a time for pranks. You know, it's not someone that's trying to break in. Someone that's trying to break in is trying to be quiet, right? Someone just wants to bang and, and bring fear into the family or whatever. Why? Because we're allowing this to come into our culture. People playing tranks, pr uh, pranks. And here in Proverbs chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Look at this. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. And pass away. How should you celebrate it? It says right there. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it. And pass away. God does not want us to celebrate the, the, the celebrations of wicked men. Verse number 16. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. That's what happened to us a few nights ago. Some stupid idiot, four in the morning, banging on our door. Right? Runs away, whatever happens. Why? He couldn't sleep. Right? For they sleep not, except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just, look at this, that's us, is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. As Christians, we should not participate of the work of the wicked or the works of darkness. We're called to avoid it. And you don't need to turn there. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. It says here, And ye shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy, and have uh, served you from, uh, sorry, served you from other people, that ye should be mine. A man also, or woman that hath a familiar spirit, or that is a wizard, shall surely be put to death. They shall stone them with stones, their blood shall be upon them. You know, wizards, witches, those that do these practices, God says they should be put to death. Put to death. 
It's an abomination. Okay? Christians, believers, we need to stay away from these celebrations. Stay away. Don't walk in darkness. Okay? But there are seducing spirits today. Seducing spirits trying to seduce our children to celebrate this wicked celebration. What about the jack-o'-lanterns? Now, I don't really see jack-o'-lanterns. I'm sure it's coming in. I'm sure soon we'll see them everywhere. I don't really see them in, in, in Australia that much. But in America, a very popular thing to do because they've got these large pumpkins. They've got mega pumpkins. It's, you know, they've got the right conditions for that. And they carve out those pumpkins. They carve out a little wicked-looking face in there. And they put a lamp in there that shines out of it, right? You guys are familiar with that? Jack-o'-lantern. Let me tell you a little about the history when it comes to the jack-o'-lantern. Why is it called the jack-o'-lantern? Well, the story goes, and obviously this is a fable once again, but this is the story. There's this guy called Stingy Jack. Okay, Stingy Jack. It was a, he was a man who would trap the devil. That's what they say. He would trap the devil, and he would only let the devil go if the devil promised not to send him to hell. So according to the story, he did not want to go to hell, so he would try to blackmail the devil so he would not go to hell. Okay. Now, immediately, as a believer, that should just be nonsense to you, right? Nonsense. Because in Luke 12, 5, it says, But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, referring to God. Fear him which after he have killed have power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Hey, who casts the wicked into hell? It's not the devil. It's our Lord God that casts people into hell. You can't make an agreement with the devil. He's got no power over hell. In fact, the Bible tells us in Revelation 20.10 that he's going to burn in the lake of fire forever. It says in Revelation 20.10, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the destiny of hell, of the devil. Burning day and night forever and ever in the lake of fire. He's got no power over hell. Give me a break. Hell is the righteous wrath and anger of God. His judgment on the wicked. Those that reject Jesus Christ the Savior. Prepared for the devil and his angels, the Bible says. So the story is nonsense just to begin with. All right. And we see the Bible reveals the truth, right? We're rebuking darkness with the light of God's word here tonight. Anyway, obviously, this man did not want to go to hell. He wanted to go to heaven. This, this story, this stingy Jack. Anyway, he dies, apparently. The story goes, he dies. And heaven didn't want him either. Okay? So what happens? He ends up, his destiny was basically to be a ghost on the earth, roaming the earth for the rest of his life, forever and ever. And the story goes that the devil carved out a turnip for him and put coals of fire in that turnip that would shine his way through the earth as he, as he travels the stingy jack through the earth. Okay? Neither hell nor heaven wanted him. That's where the story comes from. And so when these immigrants, these Irish and Scottish immigrants went to America, they didn't really have turnips, but they had big pumpkins. So instead of carving out turnips, they've carved out the pumpkins, and that's the tradition. And the reason they do this is they believe it's going to scare away Stingy Jack, his ghost. And it's going to scare away all the other evil spirits that are out there. That's the idea. That's what they believe. All right. Now, what about coming to wear costumes? I already covered a little bit about the costumes. Let me just go into that a little bit more. But in medieval, medieval Britain, they would dress up the young in costume during this time. And these children would go asking for food and for money. Okay. Obviously, people are going to be more receptive, more forgiving to little children, uh, you know, it's begging for food rather than adults. And the problem that I have with this, you know, according to the Bible, Ephesians 4.17 says, Neither give place to the devil. What are we referring to here? 28. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Does God tell us to, to train our children to be beggars, to go out to the neighbors and beg for food and money? No, the Bible says that's giving place to the devil. We need to people that go, out, that go out and work hard. We need to go there and work with our hands so we can be people that can give to the needy. Not begging for food, not begging for money. What these you know, British people did was teach their children the way of the devil. They gave place to the devil begging. Begging, hey, go and work a job. 
You know, go and labor with your hands. You know, for me, if you're a believer in Christ and you go and work with your hands, the Lord will bless you. It doesn't matter how, you know, if, if you're living in the worst time on the earth, it doesn't matter if there's been wars going around you and there's famines. Look, you just do what God says. He'll provide for you. He'll find a way. You know, you, I truly believe that. But these children are being taught how to be beggars. And, uh, you know, again, once again, to, to, to avoid being terrorized by evil spirits, they would dress up like evil spirits. Okay? The thought was that they're tricking the evil spirits to leave them alone. Okay? Because these evil spirits apparently are trying to get out there and torment human beings. So if you dress up like an evil spirit, they'll think, oh, you're not, you know, you're not a human being. You're one of us. Okay? That's the idea behind it. So it's, it's fear. They dressed up because of fear. They did not want to be terrorized by these evil spirits. But the Bible says in 2 Timothy 1.7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Now, brethren, I don't know if the thought of Halloween scares you. I don't know. Does it scare you? You know, knowing that there are witches and, and wizards and, 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 and Satan worshippers and, and just, you know, these, these pagan people enjoying the celebrations, you know, doing their witchcraft, doing their curses, doing the, all these. Uh, does that give you fear? I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't. Now, let, let me just make something very clear. There's nothing wicked about October 31st. There's nothing wicked about tomorrow. You know, it's a, it's a day that the Lord hath made. Okay? We'll be glad and rejoice in it, right? It's a day that the Lord hath made. We shouldn't allow these practices to give us fear. God has given us the Holy Spirit, and He's not given us the spirit of fear. In 1 John 4, 4, it says, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. You know what these children needed to do? You know what these our, our children here in, on the Sunshine Coast need to do? They need to just believe on Jesus Christ. They need to have the Spirit of God in them. That's how they overcome the wicked one. Not by dressing up like the wicked. Okay? Not by dressing up. That's not going to, you know, uh, help your fear. What's going to overcome your fear of the wickedness of the devils and this wicked practice, this wicked holiday, is by putting on Jesus Christ, by believing on Him, receiving the Holy Ghost. All right, so I hope that gives you an idea of what Halloween is, what it represents. Again, this is a newer thing for us as Australians. It's not an Australian practice. I want to get back with that. We just kick that overseas again. I don't, I don't know how we do it. I, I, actually, I know how we do it. Okay, I know how we do it. It's the same answer to everything, every problem we have in Australia. But in conclusion, how do we respond to this, brethren? How do we respond? Number one, do not celebrate Halloween. Okay, do not celebrate Halloween. And... Uh, you know, my, my wife and I, many years ago, you know, when we had a few people come to our door, kids, very few, we always wondered, what should we do when these kids come, you know? Listen, don't celebrate it. It's up to you what you want to do. You know, if you just want to be home and just not answer the door that night, you'll know they'll be around. Just do that. Don't answer the door if that's the best way to do it. Or open the door, like I said, and just say, hey, we don't celebrate. This house doesn't celebrate Halloween, okay? Hey, here's the tracks, all right? Well, whatever you, you feel you need to do, you know, uh, just don't celebrate it. You know, don't, don't have lollies. You know, don't, be, don't leave that temptation in your house where you might be, you feel sorry, ah, oh, just give them a lolly, we've attract. No, no, look, don't participate in, in the works of the wicked, all right? 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Please go there, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. While you're turning there, I'm going to read to you from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 14. We already read this passage just as a reminder. It says, enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. Okay? Don't participate. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Listen, your local government, you know, your community is trying to get you out of the house to celebrate these holidays with the wicked, with the ungodly. Barbecue, food, celebrations, music, clowns, I don't know, whatever, you know, uh, let's, let's celebrate, you know? No, don't fellowship with these people. Don't get yoked into their celebrations. Verse 15, for what concord have Christ with Belial? Or what part have he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God hath said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, 
and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You are the people of God. You are the temple of God. God indwells in you. Do you want to take God with you to celebrate Halloween? Hey, God, let's go celebrate Halloween. You're not acting then. If you're doing that, you're not acting as the people of God. You know, you're celebrating with the works of the devil. <clears throat> so number one, do not celebrate Halloween. Just get away from it. If it's too hard for you, get out of the house. Just go, to, go somewhere, spend time with the family. Get out of that place. If, that's, you know, if it's too hard for you, you know, to, to not uh, participate in the, in the celebrations. But number two, how do we respond? And um, I'm just borrowing in a little bit from what Brother Callum preached. Of course, Jesus Christ said, you know, in John 8, 12, Then spake Jesus unto them and said, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And if we're following after him, Jesus says that we cannot walk in darkness. If you walk in darkness, if you celebrate Halloween, you're not walking with Jesus Christ. Let me just say that. You're not walking with him. Okay? You're given into sin. You're given into the lust of the flesh. You're given into the devil's seducing spirits, believers. We should not do that. That shouldn't be part of our life. Not only is Jesus Christ the light of the earth, in Matthew, or the light of the world, Matthew 5, 14, Jesus says about us, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it shall give a light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Maybe that's the best you can do, is just be a light in your community when those kids come to your house. Hey, we believe in Jesus. We don't celebrate Halloween. Okay? Jesus is the light of the world. He'll reprove the darkness. But what I'm asking for you guys, brethren, and this is a last minute thing, is I'm going to use the opportunity tomorrow to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. You know, please go to Romans 13. Go to Romans 13 while I speak. My local area is going to celebrate, I told you, a couple of streets away. They're going to put on their celebration at 5.30 p.m. I'm not interested in knocking those streets because they've already committed to have their time with the devil. You know, their hearts are already going to be hardened. They've already, you know, decided, yeah, we'll celebrate in our street. Give us these lollies, you know, government, local government, so we can give it to the kids. But I'll be knocking the surrounding streets of the area. Okay, I'll be knocking those surrounding streets um, from 3 p.m. If you guys are free, come and join me. Just a few minutes away, five minutes away from here. If you're free, 3 p.m. tomorrow, please participate with me. I know a lot of you guys have to work, but I think this is something we need to do annually. Annually. It's getting worse, guys. It's getting worse. You know, if you're able next year, you know, Halloween day, take the day off. All right? <laughs> take the day off. And, and let's, let's make this a soul-winning event. Let's make this a soul-winning time we can shine the light of the gospel, you know, in this dark world that we live in. You guys in Romans 13, verse 11. Romans 13, verse 11. The Bible says, And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Listen, guys, tomorrow I'm not putting on the costumes. I'm not putting on the Halloween costumes. I'm not putting on the devil costumes. But I am going to put something on. It said that right there. The armor of light. Let us put on the armor of light. That's what we need to do tomorrow. The armor of light, okay? Let's keep going. Verse number uh, 15, sorry, verse number 13. Let us walk honestly. As in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Hey Amen. I'm getting dressed up tomorrow. I'm going to put on the armor of light. I'm going to put on Jesus Christ tomorrow. If you guys want to dress up with me, let's go dress up and celebrate October 31st by preaching the gospel of light to this community. They need to hear it. I want to mess up the day. I want, I want a bit of gospel. I want a bit of light shining there. I want people to get angry that we're using the day to celebrate Jesus. Nothing wrong with the day. It's the day that God created. Let's use it to preach the gospel. So tomorrow, guys, 3 p.m. If you're free, let me know. I know it's last minute. 
you know, you've got to work, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to take my kids with me. And my plan is this. I'm going to go knock, if, if no one else can join me, I'm going to go knock with a couple of my kids, knock doors. You want to come? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Anyone else? <laughs> all right. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, and on the other side of the street, I'm going to send my four oldest kids. You know why? Because when they see kids, they're going to open the door. Because they're expecting, <laughs> they're expecting trick or treat. All right? And here's what my kids are going to do. Isabel, Nicholas, Matthias, and, and, uh, Matthias and Christian. They're going to knock on the door. And they're going to give them a tract. And say, hey, you know, uh, we're from the local Baptist church, New Life Baptist church. We, you know, m- my father's going house to house preaching the gospel. Are you willing for my dad to come here and tell you how you can be 100% sure you're going to heaven? All right? And if they say yes, they're going to run to the other side of the street, grab me, and say, Dad, this person wants to hear the gospel. And I'll go there and give them the gospel. That's the plan. Like, I'm going to use my kids. I'm going to use the occasion, right? Because the neighbors are expecting kids to come house to house. All right, let's use the occasion then. Let's do that. Let's let them put on the armor of light, put on Jesus Christ. That's the plan. All right? So how am I going to celebrate so in? By so winning. I'm not going to celebrate so in. That became Halloween. No, I'm going to celebrate by so winning. Okay? Get out there. Giving the gospel to this community. Let's pray.